Ben, um, and then we'll go to Drake. Um, Blake Coach, you can make an opening statement if you have one. Um, yes, it's been a, a very decent week. Uh, you know, the, the result in, in Dallas, I think, has continued to build some momentum and some internal confidence and belief. And, uh, you know, we, we, we take a, a very good away result into what is a difficult month into Toronto now, which I'm sure won't be easy. Um, you, you guys played Toronto not that long ago, um, but it, it's kind of a different ballgame on the road, as, as you've talked about in the past. What, what are you expecting from them and, and just kind of the road trip in general? It's a long one. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, we, we've had some really tough games against Toronto, and, you know, I can cast my mind back as, as far as, you know, the early introduction of Insigne and Bernadeschi. Um, you know, they gave that group uh, an, an added dimension and, and, and boost. And I think along the way, yeah, they've, you know, they've obviously run into one or two problems if you want to read the press. But it doesn't seem to be affecting too much on the field. You know, they've, I think they've adopted a slightly different look and maybe even, um, you know, a, a, a more competitive group of players, they look very compact um, and whilst they're not, they're not winning games week after week, they're always in games and if you take, I think last weekend's result against Minnesota as, as the, the most recent example, I think it was the 89th minute Minnesota at home managed to get themselves back on level terms. The point I'm trying to make is through maybe one or two little teething problems, they're, they're still a very, very competitive side and shouldn't be taken lightly at all. Um, obviously, there is some environmental stuff going on up in the Northeast with the, with the fires and some like air, air quality concerns. Have you guys planned for that at all, or is that something you're concerned about? We've, we've got some gas masks we're going to wear in the game, I think. <laughs> I, I've, I've no idea. The, the league will, will, will probably take the lead on that. Um, I'm sure they've... They've got whatever information coming through from Toronto or anywhere else that w would not put us or them in, in harm's way or the fans for that matter. So, you know, we'll, we'll prepare for the game as, uh, as we need to. And if anyone says otherwise, then we'll, we'll readapt. Okay. Yeah, Gary, um, unrelated to the Toronto game, but uh, I just wanted to ask you about the Lena Messi decision uh, yesterday. Um, ask for your thoughts. And of course, there's only one thing that relates, connects Nashville to Miami, is just when they expanded into the league. That's yeah. the uh, connection. Uh, I'm curious from your point of view as a, a coach who has coached this team since its start, um, what do you think that does for, for Miami in terms of what they have been building, uh, but also for, for MLS and what that means for their future? Well, I think, there's, I think there's something else you can wrap into that as well. What, what does it say for the other teams, you know? You, I mean, look, first and foremost, it's an incredibly exciting move. I can only imagine what, what that feels like down in Miami for the, for the supporters and for the, for the players and staff there. I mean, it's, it's incredible news. I mean, everything I was reading suggested other than MLS. So it's a huge coup for, for the club and for the league. I mean, the, the publicity that surrounds Lionel Messi is immense. Um, I can only assume that the attraction for other players uh, now that he's made that move and, and chosen to, to be part of that Miami group and part of MLS, you know, that it will be all eyes on MLS because of the individual that you're talking about. But as I said at the start of it, you know, it, it can be pretty daunting listening to what, what is going on down there with, with Lionel Messi and, and then maybe the other connections that you're starting just to hear about, um, it sounds like there's another half a dozen huge DP type characters that are, are very keen to join him down there now. So, I mean, look, it's, it's brilliant for their organisation. Um, you have to suspect that it, you know, it pushes them in a, a hugely positive direction. And I would imagine there'll be a lot of pressure to do well down there though as well. Just to follow up 
follow up from that. You, you coached in two different eras of MLS and understanding not just the quality of the players, but also from club to club, how they build their rosters. You know, some who are more star studded, who are depending on the one or two players. You know, maybe that could could be Miami in, in, in a star studded roster as opposed to obviously Nashville fielding uh, what you would class as a, a veteran, cohesive, and uh, you know, really just an all out balance uh, throughout the team. Do you think that that is needed to have two different you know, polarizing ways to build a team for the betterment of the league in, in terms of how you know, teams are being built out? It's the it's the rules it's the rules of the league. People will, you know, will see that there's a slightly different way of, of making it work for them. Um, that doesn't mean to say that it's wrong. The only ever, um, you know, guideline is how well is the team doing, um, and that I'm sure applies to on and off the field. There will be a massive impact, I'm sure, off the field as much as there will be on the field with. Lionel Messi going to, to, to Miami. Um, you know, the, the, I think the difference and, and not having run into it, th th certainly not to this degree, you're talking about possibly the greatest soccer player to have been on this planet. I mean, he's in that conversation, if not the best. So therefore, the, the guy is incredibly talented, the most talented. And therefore, the difference between him and maybe some of the other guys on the roster is going to be that much bigger. So I think, look, you, you're after an impact from the individual. Um, but I would also think that they're after, you know, what he brings as a professional and, and that type of, of, of guidance and, and support and professionalism for the other players in the organisation. But... It, there's no point in me talking about that. You know, whoever goes in there, whoever takes that team's, get, you know, going to guide that as well. But I, I just think it's it's incredible news for the league in general. It's it's, it's a massive move. We'll move to the Zoom room. Blair, go ahead. Hey Gary, um, we just got some news uh, up in Cincinnati that they are uh, finalizing where they signed a striker around the six seven million figure. Um, with the last couple of years, we've seen. Does that put any pressure on what you are trying to accomplish with Nashville SC? Does it kind of push the envelope a little bit and we'll want you to get those bigger names and maybe just more expensive players out there? Well, I, look, I, I'm not sure that expense is always the right way of, of pitching it. You know, you can overpay for players as well and, and they can be underproductive. So I think the team in general, whoever it is, decides, you know, how much that player is worth to bring to their organisation in whatever way, shape or form. We've just spoken about Lionel Messi is going to bring so much more than just talent on the field. So I, I can't comment on other teams and what they do. What I will say is the league has moved in such a direction where a, it's a huge attraction. B, there are more finances to bring these players to the league. Um, and, I, and I think as well, the mechanisms within the league are allowing the groups to be stronger wrapped around those particular DP individuals as well. If you, if you look some years back, there's some terrific players in the league. I mean, you know, take someone like David Beckham who came to the league, who, who was a, you know, world-class star, but I'm sure if you spoke to him, he'd say that the disparity between where he was and maybe some of the players in that Galaxy group at the time was, was way, way, um, you know, more detached than it would be now. If, if you look around at what could be achieved at somewhere like Miami, bringing Lionel Messi in, the, the supporting players around him are very, very good players. You know, the, these, these are not, you know, just two or three, you know, excellent individuals that are, have got a, a supporting team around them who, who are just not any good enough. This is not the case anymore. So getting back to your question, I think the thing we have to be mindful of is making sure we always bring the right players in, 
being aware of what that deal looks like for the team, not just for now, but for the future, so that you don't get put in a position where, you know, that, that can be a hindrance rather than, you know, a, a positive for the group. You know, there's a lot of things that go into signing players. And what I do know is we are looking very closely at certain individuals that may or may not be available for us, but we want to be ready if the opportunity was there. And if we could add a player, I think great. But right now, if you look at our team in general as well, we're going through a very, very good spell. And I think timing is also in, important. You know, bringing players in at a good, a good moment, whether that's to try and enhance the group when you're doing well, or of course on a lot of occasions to try and improve the group if they're not doing so well. But we're actually on a good run and therefore, I think the stress and the pressure of saying we need someone and desperately is not there. We, we can be a little bit more calculated about this. And, and if, as I say, if the right opportunity is there, I'm sure we'll be ready to take advantage of it. Yeah, but again, that's that's a, a, a double-edged sword because, you know, whilst I would love all of those players to be around the team constantly because they're good players, they're playing for their country for a reason, um, they also want the opportunity and to have the ability to represent their nation. So therefore, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always pleased for the the players that go away, it's a great accolade to, to be able to play for your country. Um, but of course we miss them. What that means is that there are guys in the group and, and having a good group and a competitive group then come into play, but there are guys in the group that are gonna get maybe a bigger lion's share of minutes and it's a wonderful opportunity for them to, to really step up to the plate and make a case for, for their position in the team. So. Yeah, what, the one thing I always hope is that they obviously come back in one piece. Claudio, anything from you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Thank you. Uh, Gary, um, I was just uh, um, thinking about this game uh, coming up with Toronto. Um, it seems not, not necessarily for Nashville, but other teams, every time they go to that, that particular field there, it seems like it gives most teams a lot of trouble. It has more than any other field that, that I've seen in the league. Is there a particular reason why that happens there besides that the team is, is well managed? Uh, it's a very good team and that stuff, but the, uh, are the field conditions way different than the, than the other fields that, that could cause so much trouble? No, I, I don't think so. I understand what you're saying though, Claudio. I mean, it's always a very difficult place to play. I think there's been a lot of changes there. You know, they've, they've spent an awful lot of money on that stadium over the years. Um, you know, I, I obviously remember playing the final there in 2010 and it was so, so different to, to what you're seeing right now. But I think you get great support there, number one. They get behind their team and, and let's not forget, they've had a tremendous amount of success there. So, you know, they're, they're very expectant, that crowd. You know, they, they, they don't... They don't leave their guys in in any, you know, uh, a doubt that they expect the team to be doing well. So therefore, you get the very best efforts out of the home team. The field, when I've been there, is normally played quite quickly as well. I don't know whether that's, you know, just the environment being on the edge of, of the lake there and it being a bit windier and always a little bit drier, the field. But it seems to play quite firm and quite quick. Um, but I think, I think ultimately, we, we've seen some really good teams there. You know, you, you can go back, what, five, six, seven years now? You know, they've been in multiple finals. They've invested in that group very, very heavily. And, and I think, you know, you're looking at a group of players that are, are, are real top-end guys. So therefore, you know, it's, it's never going to be easy. 
the one thing that I think we can go there with this time out is some confidence. I think the guys have got plenty of belief about what they can achieve. And of course, we're in a good run ourselves. And if there's ever a time to go up there and, and give a good account of ourselves, it's going to be now. All right, everybody. Um, Jacob, any thoughts on this week's training headed into Toronto's match this weekend? Uh, it was a great week of training. Um, our first full week in a while um, with the Wednesday game, so it was nice to get uh, back in the, in the normal things, I guess. So everyone's feeling good. We went go-karting the other day. It was a good time. Um, team's in a good spot, so yeah, it's good. Did you first? Uh, I wasn't first, but I got put in the first heat. So we did like these time trials, and I was in the first heat. So I'm really happy about that. I thought I was going to be last. So it's a, it's a big victory for me. All right, we'll start in the room, uh, then go ahead. Yeah, Jake, I mean, going back to Toronto, I, I think for the first time since you became international, yeah. um, just wh how are you feeling before that? Do you have like family and stuff coming out to the games? And, and what kind of what are you expecting against your old team? Um, yeah, I got my parents, um, both sets of grandparents coming as well. Uh, it's, it's one of those games where they're able to fly out since it's only one flight type place. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but nervous, obviously, you know, playing against the old team. Haven't done it before uh, away. Um, so there's more things to, to take on. I hope the fans still like me. Um, hope I hope I, there's good vibes when I go back there. But um, I'm really excited for it, ready to get after it. And, and it should be a good game. Have you like have you been, been like keeping in touch with any of your old teammates? Or are you kind of this week just trying to keep quiet and focus on focus on your end of things? I talked to Oso, Osorio once. Um, just a quick little chat because I know he's come back from an injury, so he posted a picture like him playing. So I was happy for him that he's back. Um, but no, I haven't really, really caught up with any of them that much. Yeah, Jacob, I'm curious about obviously the, the wildfires up in Canada right now. I'm curious about how is that affecting your family at all, and what's that been like looking at that from a distance? Uh, my family were lucky, and they they were they were about like an hour away from where it was happening. Um, but we had a few family friends that were, were close to it, but um, they weren't affected. But obviously, the fam like the, all the people that were affected, it's, it's tough to see. Um, obviously, you can't do much about it with how dry and windy it was back home. It was just spreading like crazy. Um, so thoughts and prayers go to all of them, and, and hopefully they're doing well. But um, yeah, it's, it's sad to see, but I'm, I'm glad it's, it's contained and it's over with now, and, and hopefully they can get going again. Toronto, but also to, to watch them obviously on another team. I'm curious since you've left um, and come to Nashville, obviously it was during that time when uh, Insignia was coming in and obviously Vern Besky um, around the same time. I'm curious, what was your impression, like your first impression personally, but also just in the locker room about uh, the change of, of obviously bringing in new players and how has that evolved for you, um, how you've seen the team since then? Uh, is, it, is it the same or is it different on how you look at the team? I think it's the same. I mean, those two guys are, are top professionals. They come in, they work hard, they get the job done. Um, even with the language barrier, they, they work hard to you know try to get the gap away and then maybe be able to speak a bit more English. So, and from the little time I was there, they're great guys. Um, but I mean, I don't I don't know how it is there. I only caught them for a few for a few months, and it was the time where I was kind of going through. It was a little hard for me as well with with not playing as much. So I don't think I was seeing it with a it's a clear mind, um, but I haven't really like kind of I don't know the inside any more of it there. But um, yeah, I mean I'm happy here. It's it's all good and excited for the game. <laughs> uh, Gary was talking about uh, obviously how you know, what it's like playing up there, just the atmosphere, the surface, um, how Toronto likes to play when they're at home. How would you break down obviously from an insider point of view uh, what does home mean to them in terms of how they like to play? I think they like to play. They had not a lot of long balls. They like to play from the back to the front, like just just all the way through. Um, so it'll be it'll be tough um, to to try to get them out of that rhythm and and get after it. But yeah, I don't I don't want to give up any secrets or anything like that too early on us. So <laughs> Gary told me before he headed in, don't say anything. So I mean, I'm, I'm keeping my keeping everything close. So I keep saying I'm excited for the game. It should be a good one, but I don't want to give any secrets because I'm not good at keeping them. So <laughs> just gonna say that. All right, we'll move to the Zoom room. Blair, uh, you can go ahead. Hey, Jacob. Uh, we saw that you were on the initial list uh, for the Canadian national team, of course, and then the final list came out. Um, has there been any conversations directly with the Canadian national team, or how does that make you feel overall? 
Um, I mean, obviously, I would like to be on that, but um, John Herman, he sent me a little voice memo just saying, uh, keeping me in the loop with everything, and he's, he's continuing to watching watching all my games, and he'll be watching this weekend just for the Gold Cup roster as well. So it's nice to hear that, just, just that he's watching, and, and I'm on that fringe of being in and out of the team. So it's good for my confidence, and, and just to hear from John as well, it's, it's really nice. Uh, I'll, whatever, whatever helps the team win, and, and whatever I can do to help them, I'll, I'll do. Um, and recently, it's been coming off the bench and trying to make a difference. It look, it's not half bad when you got Fafa running at guys for whatever seventy minutes, and then I can come on and, and they're a little, little tired. It's, it's, it is fun. I'll be honest, but sometimes I do wish it's a bit longer of a time that I can run at them. Um, but no, it's been amazing. And like when you guys got like Hani and Teal up front who can hold it up, and I can run behind off that after Fafa has been killing these guys like nonstop running. It's it's a lot of fun, but it is fun to start sometimes and do that. But at the end of the day, it's whatever the team needs, I'll, I'll do and and help out. Thank you. No worries. We'll move to Claudia. Uh, Jacob. Um, well, you you, say, you stated there that uh, that you were kind of worried about that. I hope she still does. <laughs> You know, Guppy, Steve Guppy here, who he's kind of taking me under his wing and just giving me a sense of like confidence and, and this persona that I can kind of get after it and, and trust myself and be a good player. So I feel like that's just made the biggest difference for me as well as all the team just kind of get behind me and help me out. So I feel like it's, it's a completely different player than I was in Toronto and I feel, you know, really good to get after it every day and, and, and just trust myself. So I, I feel great right now. No, but I've gotten a few texts being like, it's kind of crazy that you're going to play against Messi. So, I mean, it, it is mind blowing that he's, I, I won't believe it until I'm on the field and I see him on the, like, on the field with me, but it's just, it's still crazy to, to see it. 